be joining you soon, very soon, in Taipei for the Talk UX conference. Uh, I will be representing my company Refugee Text, which I co-founded with Kieran Duffy and Koa Solvog. I am super excited to give a 50-minute talk um, about our learnings and experiences uh, working with humanitarian aid uh, as a designer. So to give you a bit of background, uh, in 2015 there was an increased influx of refugees coming to, to Europe. They were coming from some of the areas around Europe that have uh, suffered from war for a long time at this time. Uh, one example is Syria. At one point there were more refugees in Europe than there has been since, since the Second World War in the 40s. Me and Kore and Kiran were interested in figuring out how we as interaction designers um, could try and figure out if there was anything we could uh, contribute uh, to the situation. So at the time uh, we were based in Copenhagen uh, working for Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design. Uh, thanks to them we were also able to, to start a company uh, based in Copenhagen um, and founded to work to work on refugee texts uh, for some time. So we started out by traveling uh, across Europe to try and map what was going on, to meet with refugees, to meet with volunteers, with organizations around Europe, to try and reveal and figure out what the, the main needs were that people had. And what we found out was that people were in great need of information. Um, it might sound like a no-brainer, but I think that a lot of people were surprised that refugees had smartphones and that they were well-educated and, um, and that they were people, basically. Um, so we decided to design a, a chatbot that people could access through their phones since we could see uh, that people had phones, so that was a possibility for them. So through the chatbot, uh, refugees could access, or anybody, also volunteers that wanted to uh, inform themselves, uh, could access information through answering multiple choice questions. And in this, by doing this, uh, we were able to provide personalized uh, and up-to-date information, also translated into the refugees' own language, or at least a language they could understand. And this was something we saw was missing when we did our research. So we launched in spring, early summer 2016, even if our service wasn't finished and it was unpolished and it was definitely um, an early version of what we uh, have later done, but it was the best thing we could have ever done uh, because that gave us the access to humanitarian aid organizations that we had been looking, we had been looking for in our process of developing refugee text. So when we meet at the conference in Taipei, I will be talking about how we, how we worked in this field and how we, how we tried to, to constantly uh, collaborate and partner up with different organizations and what we learned from that and what we ended up doing, where we are now, um, mistakes we made, good decisions we made, uh, and uh, unexpected happenings along the way. I'm super interested in connecting with other people that are designers uh, that have been working uh, with humanitarian aid or that are interested in working in humanitarian aid because I think it's a field that we as designers need to embark a lot more than we're doing already and we need to be doing it by ourselves because the humanitarian aid sector is fairly complicated and to some extent, uh, bureaucratic and hierarchic uh, startups that just make solutions and try something out is the way to to kind of try and navigate uh, different solutions to to emerging problems. So that's a bit what I will be talking about. Uh, I will also share with you how I ended up being uh, the type of designer that I am today. I think it's always interesting to hear from UX designers and service and interaction designers how they ended up where they are because the fields haven't been um, a way to be a designer for, for a long time and uh, there isn't a strong tradition for these fields. 
Uh, so it's always interesting to hear how people ended up where they are. So I will share that with you and I'm more than happy to hear how you ended up where you are also. Uh, and right now I live in Berlin, in Germany, working for as a service designer for a company called IXDS. Working as a service designer is something I love because it gives me the chance to, to jump into different contexts and different industries and constantly develop and redevelop my methods and, and tools uh, when exploring new contexts and, and connecting the dots and uh, figuring out how design can contribute to different, uh, to different contexts. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, and right now I'm sitting in my apartment in Berlin and it's become a bit fall in, in Germany already. So I'm very happy to go to Taipei and catch the tail of summer before I will go back and, and uh, be part of winter until uh, March or April next year. So I'm super curious to meet everybody at the conference. I hope there will be people from, from also different um, industries and different pr professions, not necessarily design, because I think we have a lot to learn from collaborating with one another. I'm more than happy to, to meet you in the crowd and don't hesitate to ask questions um, or even to disagree, uh, I think a lot of good things can come out of disagreement, so I'm up for those discussions as well. And I never went, been to Taiwan, so just coming to Taiwan and exploring a uh, grand landscape, that's what I'm expecting. I'm from so southern Sweden and I've lived in Denmark for a long time and both those places are very flat, so I can't wait to uh, expand uh, uh, my horizon vertically in the Taiwanese landscape. And don't hesitate to connect either before or during or after the conference.